Hey everybody, Carl here. Um, no good news. No good news. So I've been slowly working on the car, getting things ready, doing little stuff, e-brake cables, uh, settling suspension out, e evening it up. Uh, kind of stuff like that, getting it drivable. Well, been doing these little test drives. I have the uh, light throttle kind of cruise tune pretty decent and I was kind of working up the map and then waiting for a buddy to get here he's coming from another state to do the wide open throttle tuning and all the other stuff and all the stuff that I'm not that I can do but I'm not confident he's done it before so doing all that and then uh, I was chasing the rear end clunk got that figured out but when I went to test drive it to verify that the clunk was gone uh, my fuel pump started screaming real loud. So when that happened, the car started kind of sputtering pretty decent, like pretty badly. Kind of didn't want to go. AFRs were pretty high, pretty lean. So, yeah, that's weird. So pulled into my buddy's house, which is thankfully right next door. I was only literally doing from here to there, back and forth kind of type trips. And I was like, okay, it's pretty loud. Fuel pumps are screaming. I'll put a cell phone video clip. I didn't have my camera with me. Um, and what the fuel pump was doing is Walbury 255, in case anybody's wondering. And so I popped the hood real quick because I have a fuel pressure regulator with, with a gauge right here. So I had fuel pressure set about 40 psi because that's what. Pretty close to what the factory FC runs. I wasn't going to adjust it unless I needed more because I have 750cc secondary injectors. So had about 40 psi, and I just quick revved the motor while this fuel pump is screaming, and then it like just drew down below 20 psi. So at that point, I knew the uh, fuel pump was either pulling air running dry, which would be pulling air, something going on like that. So, quick limped at home, um, shut it off, came back out, started back up, fuel pump is running normally. Like, okay, that's weird. And revved it a few times and uh, fuel pressure increased 45 PSI because it's a rising rate fuel pressure regulator. So when vacuum goes away, fuel pressure increases slightly. So, it did that, and I like, okay, let it run a little bit, and then started howling again, so they okay. Did it again, again, same thing, fuel pressure getting low. So, figure, okay, well, it needs a fuel pump. So now I'm in the process of pulling the fuel tank. Uh, it wasn't low on fuel. I drained a little over 10 gallons of fuel out of it. Uh, I've been frantically dumping fuel in everything. The uh, Spitfire is currently a storage vessel for fuel, and the all weird thing is it's 93 octane, which is good, but it's also pre-mixed, so whatever I put it in is going to be a little smoky for a little bit. Uh, so, and of course I topped up my, uh, you know, my lawnmower is topped up, and my Golf, which doesn't have a cat on it, is topped up today. I filled it up this morning, actually, so I don't can't put it there. Jeep's fucking diesel. If that truck's a diesel, Beetle's a fruitless effort, so I'm gonna like put it in there, top it off there, and I got a five gallon can of premix. And I was like, okay, well, I got a weed eater, and I'm like, oh, weed eater drinks a cup of fuel a month, so. Yeah, now I'm gonna start, finish up pulling this tank here. Walk you guys through that, I guess. So, with heat shield out. Because I haven't put it back together yet, fully, the whole car. Um, pull this connector out. And that's probably why my uh, fuel gauge doesn't work. That's one of the pieces from there. Um, pop three screws out, pull that plate off. So that'll push through that my vent and filler tube. I don't remember how to do my fuel lines down in the back, but I'll get to figuring that out once I start lowering the tank. 
uh, fuel tanks drain. Thankfully, Mazda gave us a uh, nice plug for that, so that drained pretty easily. And just a matter of frantically figuring out what vehicles to cram fuel in. So yeah, I'm gonna grab another camera battery because this one's dying, then uh, pull this tank out and see what we find. The lighting's gonna suck a little bit in this video. I don't feel like breaking out my stadium lighting. So when I did this, I did uh, adapter fittings to AN line, so it's AN6 line all the way up for the feed. And I think the return might be AN6 as well. So goes out of the wall row, out of the stock pickup tube for an FC, and there's a stock FC fuel slosh cup in the tank welded to the bottom. So it comes up, out down long into a fuel filter up to the fuel regulator and all that. So I just got to go in here and do all those AN lines, loosen them up, and then uh, I'll be able to pull this tank. So there's a stock connector pass through and then I have it terminated there to a mega squirt to make removal a little bit easier. So yeah, I'll mark those two lines off and pull the tank down. And yeah, before anybody asks, I'm being a shooby tonight. Of course, all these little fucking screws. Bullshit we find. Filter sock seen better days. The bottom ain't too bad, but the top's pretty shitty. The inside of the pump doesn't look bad. The tank. Fuel tank's gone shitty from sitting. Fuck. So yeah, there's the uh, FC uh, slosh cup that I put in there. And I can tell you, that didn't look like that before because while well, I was trying to remember how I did all this, I went back on my Facebook and looked at to 2014, 2015 when I did this and I saw, you know, photo I posted of the inside of the tank with a slosh cup welded to it and it was clean and clear. So that means this is recent or this has happened between then and now. So now 
I have the option of trying to clean this tank, trying to find another tank, modifying it like I did this one, finding another tank, and doing a external fuel pump, and like a, uh, a sump on the bottom of the tank maybe. My car is pretty low, I'd be, and I want to street drive it, so I'd be afraid of like hitting the bottom of the tank and breaking the fuel fitting off and having some issue there, but maybe I can come up with another way to pull fuel out of the bottom of a tank and have like a decent like surge tank set up maybe. Um, yeah, that's, that's a little bit of a bummer. Kind of annoyed by that. Um, and the fuel pump itself doesn't look like it's got shit in it, but this definitely does. Now, if it was this is just overcome with shit, that's pretty bad right there. The bottom doesn't look bad. I don't know. I'm going to have to do some thinking about this, figure out what my next step is, but yeah, it's pretty disappointing, pretty disappointing. But this is what happens when you let a project sit for four or five years when you're fooling around with other stuff. And honestly, like this should have dedicated the time to this car and not like half the other shit that didn't work out. Um, all that stuff. Jeep has perpetual starter issues, having more starter issues again. So, I think it's about time to clean house and focus on a few projects. So, yeah, see what we do here in the next uh, next rendition. Thanks for watching. This is uh, pretty disappointing because tomorrow this car was supposed to get tuned, and I was hoping to like be able to drive it a few times but I still want to drive it before fall time I want to get a few good days maybe an autocross or two in something along those lines but right now this is after motivation and money too I mean it's gonna be you know whatever I decide on a tank if I'm gonna clean this one out it's whatever it takes to clean it if I decide to get another one it's gonna be whatever the fuck cost of a tank is uh, another fuel pump I was thinking about upgrading to an aeromotive now and an aeromotive fuel pump you know it's reasonable it's 115 bucks or 120 bucks for a uh, uh, 340 liter per hour this is a 225 liter per hour so an upgrade in the meantime wouldn't be a bad thing so all right well thanks for watching stay tuned for more we'll see uh see how i decide to resolve this and Go from there. Thanks for watching. Catch you later.